carefully skirting eroticism. No, I'm real glad you brought up the question. The Book of Wisdom, which is a book in the Hebrew Bible, says this is wisdom to love life. That's eros. Eros is a passion for living. So everything we're talking about is about eros. Now the Christ in John's Gospel, it's not Jesus talking, but the Christ talking, says, I've come that you may have life and have it in abundance. So that's eros multiplied, abundant life. So um, what you're saying is very real, and I'm glad you're feeling it. Yes, all spirituality is about awakening eros. But it's about realizing that it's what I would call pansexuality. Um, that all of life is sexual. I remember years ago when I was living in the Pays Basque on a farm writing my doctoral thesis in southern France. And I remember walk, it's, it's hill country down there and it's sheep country. And I would write in the morning and then go walking in the hills. And I remember day walking in the hills and feeling the sexual energy coming up through the hills. And I felt it was like, like walking on, on breasts the breasts of Mother Earth. And, there. and it was a very sexual experience. And I realized then how, how, sex, how pansexual our existences are. That eros is everywhere. There's a wonderful, brilliant essay by Audre Lorde, the deceased African-American poet, where she writes about eros. She says, I'm erotic when I make a table, when I write a poem, when I um, clean dishes, and when I make love. Because eros is a passion for living that I bring to what I do. So you see, what the West has done, religion in particular, has thrown the word eros out and given it to the pornographers. And the result is that our souls are dried up. So, and then it makes us afraid of eros, and afraid of our second chakra, and then we get in a lot of troubles <laughs> by trying to cover up the second chakra and its, its power. So much of Western culture, religion, and education is dealing only with the upper chakras. And the lower chakras are ignored as if they're going to take care of themselves or something. So eros, in fact, is much more, it, it permeates our sexuality, but it permeates much more than our sexuality. It is about our passion for living. So for me, eros is a synonym for biophilia. And in, in many ways, therefore, it's a synonym for spirituality. And we bring eros into our, into our creativity. And you bring eros certainly into your work for social justice. I, I know people who tell me that their, their greatest highs are um, being taken away in a paddy wagon when they protested at a <laughs> nuclear site or something like that. You know, that, that it's, it can be an ecstatic experience to stand up for justice. And it's very erotic to put your body on the line, etc. So again, it's like the word art that I was talking about earlier, how pre-moderns see art everywhere. So I think we, and yet in, in our culture, we've been ta taught to see eros only in our genitals. But I think eros is, in fact, a profoundly um, horizontal and democratic experience. And that we, when you think about it, when you start asking questions, that you have erotic relationships with, with animals, with plants with the son, as well as with your spouse or your lover, and with your children, who it's done differently, and with your writing or your thinking. You know, there's, a, there's an eros, eros is what drives us. And curiously, surprisingly, the Bible says this is what wisdom is, the passion for living. Now, of course, the Bible also has a whole book about eros and sexuality and spirituality, and that is the Song of Songs. And the Song of Songs, which unfortunately has been cleaned up by a lot of Christian theologians who tell us also about Jesus loving the soul and God loving Jesus and God loving the church. They ask Jews what it's about. It's about how lovemaking is a redemption of the Garden of Eden and it's, it's uh, our thank you for living. So in the Jewish tradition, you're supposed to do two things on the Sabbath. Read the Song of Songs and make love because the Sabbath is about taking delight in creation, and that's what making love does. So instead of, being, of cleaning it up, you see, and taking the sexuality out of the erotic book, it's, it's a, ter a profoundly erotic book, the Song of Song. Uh, it's there to remind us 
that lovemaking is a theophany. It's a mystical experience. It's an encountering of the divine. And um, you're not alive. Your second chakra is not alive if you don't understand that. Now, that doesn't mean, actually, though, that you cannot be celibate. Uh, for example, the Tibetan monks who, who I've heard, I heard chant a few years ago up in um, Michael Hart's, Michael, does he Hart, the drummer? Mickey, Mickey Hart, Hart, yeah, the a drummer for the Grateful Dead up in Sebastopol. He, he created this uh, studio where the Tibetan monks come to chant. It's a, a big room, and, um, and I heard them there chanting, and the whole room vibrated. And you know, you've heard these monks chant, you know, they're really into their testosterone. You know, and, and you realize that these are men who are celibate, who've done something with their sexuality that's very erotic, but it's not the normal, um, uh, literal, genital sexuality eros. It, they've channeled their eros into sound and into other cells of their body, if you want to put it that way. So, um, uh, eros, I think, is, I'm glad that you, you brought this up. Absolutely, I'm talking about. And, 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 you know, I think this is one of the problems that Ratzinger has, too, with this. I think he senses <laughs> that, um, that um, you see, we'll be talking about this later, we're talking about chaos, but I think what's really behind all fundamentalism is the, the compulsion to control chaos. And the, 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 the myth is, that eros unleashed will create uncontrollable chaos. But in fact, what if eros unleashed created uncontrollable compassion or creativity? <laughs> you know, the, nothing prevents eros being steered into something altogether beautiful and serving of the greater community. Well, our time's up.